In this video, I'm going to walk you through exactly what I think in a live head-to-head -head matchup of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If this is your first time visiting my channel, my channel is all about how you can become a better Madden player in Madden 21. And if you're looking to get better at this game, I want to encourage you to click the subscribe button at the bottom corner of your screen. It's completely free to subscribe to the channel, and it just allows you to be able to stay up to date on the latest tips and strategies right here on the channel. Now guys, in this video, I am running my nickel 335 wide defensive guide. If you wanna get my entire defensive guide, you can get that in the description for just $15. It will literally walk you through my entire defensive philosophy and how I run exactly what I run in Madden 21. Now in this game right here, what you're gonna notice is we are gonna actually be running uh, quite a bit of zone drop style coverages, um, something a little bit newer that I'm doing. And right there, I just missed a user pick. I should have had that. Um, Good read by my opponent. I've been doing a lot with zone drops recently. Um, and the reason why is more because it's a little bit more in line with my philosophy. Um, my kind of core philosophy on defense is you want to make sure that your opponent, you know, is basically forced uh, into taking field goals as opposed to touchdowns. And so uh, this defense really allows me with that opportunity to be able to do just that. So as you can see here, my opponent's kind of scrambling out of the pocket, kind of makes something happen, ends up making something happen there. And that's really, really unfortunate. Um, because I felt like we had pretty good defense right there. Now, whenever I shift into a red zone situation, one of the things that's really hard for people to understand is you really do want to, um, I really like this little 15, 0, and 5 uh, style of defense. And the reason why is because really what I like to do is I like to go down to the nickel normal. Maybe if I can get to it here, um, you're going to see we're going to go down and we didn't get the setup. And so he's able to score. That's very, very frustrating. Um... We knew exactly what to call and we just completely botched it and so he ended up scoring on us which is frustrating um but anyways what i was trying to do is go to nickel normal spy the safeties or put them in purple zones the beauty of the um the beauty of putting a zero yard uh purple zone out there is a zero yard purple zone will actually guard like a, a motion slant in the red zone or like a, a little option around the red zone They'll guard flat zones in the red zone. They'll do a lot of stuff for you that's, that's actually very helpful. Um, but they'll also play the run better. If you have a zero yard uh, zone, they tend to play the run better. So if you have like zero yard yellow zone, they'll play the run better. If you have a zero yard purple, any of those are zero yards, you're going to have a better time. So anyways, um, unfortunate first drive for me. Uh, I talk, it's ironic that I said, you know, we want to play Bimba don't break and he walked right down the field on us. So, but I felt like we had a couple of opportunities um, and we just, Part of it is really comes down to you have to get your setup in. Um, you, you you just have to get your setup in. You have to come out. So you have to know what you're going to kind of call pre-snap, and you need to go out and get it called, get all the adjustments taken care of before the ball snapped. And it's such a simple thing, but makes a massive difference. And on that last drive, I was caught off guard a couple times. Whenever they're calling like new formations, avoid calling your play. Sit for a second while you're seeing the pre-play thing and let it kind of happen. Now on offense, I'm running my bunch tight end offensive guide. If you have not already got my bunch tight end offensive guide, um, you can get that in the description of this video. It's just $15 as well. It covers the entire New York Jets playbook, but in this video specifically, I'm going to be running the bunch tight end offensive guide. So if you want to get that, that's in the description. The Jets playbook covers, um, or the guide in the description will cover bunch, bunch tight end and trip tight end offset from the New York Jets playbook. Uh, but like I said, today we're focusing primarily on the, um, you know, the bunch tight end. So anyways, uh, we're just going to start with that. Um, so yeah, we're just rolling as you can see right there nice little dot to start off the game and The reality is with this this offense is the bunch tight end is so simple yet powerful the bunch offense is Very good um, But it's it's like it doesn't what I've noticed. This is just me myself noticing this is that it doesn't really fit like you have money, you have a lot of really good plays, but they don't all really like fit cohesively. They do some, um, but not as good as this. And of course I got shamed. I need to, I don't know what, I don't know what I just got happened there, but it is what it is. P boot over is such a powerful concept too. It's so hard to, to not call this. I mean, this thing is such a powerful concept. You see again, there's that delay fade. And that's why it's, you know, really, and you can do delay fades from bunch, but 
it just doesn't rival the PA boot over. The PA boot over is such a powerful concept um, and just so, so consistently effective. So anyways, right here, we're going to get a touchdown, 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 right off the stop there. Um, easy read. And that's why I like bunch tight end. There is really only one, maybe two adjustments that people can make to truly stop PA boot over. And if they make those one or two adjustments, it leaves them very, very vulnerable to other things that we can do on the uh, on the left side of the field. So that's really why um, I really do like this this offense. It's probably, um, you know, I probably honestly just didn't run it for long enough. I've been running bunch for probably the last two, maybe three months. Um, I really only ran bunch tight in for a very small little period of time. And so, you know, I wasn't able to master it. But anyways, a little misdirection. One of the things I was talking about, so like this is a, something really, really important, a really important uh, piece of advice. So what you'll notice is um, when he calls his play, he's been calling so many random different plays. Like right here, I see gun tight. What I need to do is I need to mentally prepare. Okay, I'm gonna play gun tight. I need to go ahead and start thinking, what am I gonna do? So I'm gonna wait for a second, kind of think about it, and then I'm gonna go call my play. So now I've called my play, and now, um, you know, it's like clockwork. Now I know what to call, right? Now I know what to call. And again, it's probably, you know, I'm not gonna completely stop everything, but I'm at least more set up. You know, I'm at least more set up. You know, the way that he's running the gun tight, the one thing you have to remember is, you also have to understand what are the routes that he could put on the field because he doesn't have hot route master. So there's a limited amount of routes. Like here is Guntreas, another new formation. So what are some things? I know I've got to set up and what are some defenses? So I thought about it for a second and then I go uh, and then I go execute it. So as you can see, you know, get all my setups in, the little inside zone run. I kind of expected that's what he was gonna call. Um, but just little things make a big difference if you're if you're you, you can't get killed in one play unless you kill yourself in one play you cannot get killed in one play unless you kill yourself in one play if you start running on autopilot and you start doing all of these just you know you just kind of start oh well he's called his play so i gotta call my play instantly and you stop actually like being intentional about what you do that's where you get in problems that's where problems start to occur so like right here you know, I know, okay, short side of the field, we got that. Wide side of the field, we got this defense. Boom. And then we just play right there. And we we're hoping, and that should have been a fumble, but, you know, solid defense. We, we overall, all in all right there, much, much better defensive play. Uh, much, much better. Another thing is, like, with auto flip, that does cause some issues, um, you know, because you're trying to figure out, okay, where, you know, where's the auto flip at? Uh, here, a little single back quick pitch. Um, good call, I guess, you know, again, this is all random stuff. Um, if you want a really simple defense against random people that are just running random stuff, um, and right here, he's going to go back to this. Uh, so like right here, you see, now we've got our setup in. So now we can at least try to force it. And you know, okay, good read. All right, your tight end was able to get open, you know. But but we've at least we've at least done something to stop it. You know, we've at least forced him to do something. And we're starting to get a little bit of a read on him. We're starting to kind of understand, okay, he's gonna do this, this, and this, right? That those are all like super, super important things. It's so like right here, I'm just gonna go to a simple um defense. A simple defense out of the three five wide, because the way that he's playing is really um, random. He's still being very random with his plays. Another little easy thing that you can do if you wanna like kind of break the momentum is go to a cover two man and just call it stock. Like literally, and I'm gonna do that right here. So like we just need something to break the momentum. Um, so we're gonna go to that and we're just calling the stock. And okay, well, we're gonna run corner route and great read, you know, like, it's random stuff, random stuff. It's hard to predict. You know, he's just sitting here doing all this random stuff, somehow miraculously coming down here. But you'll see it will catch up with him as the game goes on because what's going to happen is my process is going to continue to gradually speed up. His process is going to be frozen, and he's going to make mistakes. Okay, I can already tell you how this game is going to go. 
Um, once we start to blitz and once we start to do stuff like that, where he can't just run his random little plays, now we're starting to kind of, okay, now we take this way. Oh, now we'll, okay. And that's where, you know, again, I think I kicked the ball. I did kick the ball off to start. We just need one stop. We, we just need to hold him to a field goal. Um, you know, so we forced him to drive, forced him to drive, forced him to drive. Now he's down here in the seven yard line where you can't really throw it. Um, I mean, you can throw it, but it's not a great idea. Um, you see here a little, you know, and we're just going to go get a sack. And then we're going to call a timeout. Now we've got him, now we've got about 13. Um, so what I like to do in a situation like what I'm in right now is I'm going to move these flats to 25. I'm going to put the curl flats on 10. Hooks are going to be on five now. And uh, actually, you know what? We're going to move those hooks back to uh, 10 because of where he's at on the field. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to play uh, cover two. Just simple, really, really flood the middle of coverage. Um, we've got those cloud flats at 25 yards. As you can see, close it off, and then bam, now we've got him in a position where he has to take field goal. Right? That's really the that's really the foundational of the defense is force your opponent to have to take a field goal. If you could force your opponent to have to take field goals as opposed to touchdowns, you're gonna be in a pretty good position because now we're gonna get the ball back with a minute 48 to go. We're going to be able to go down, potentially get a touchdown or a field goal, and we get ball coming out of halftime. Completely different ball game if we can execute. But it all comes back to, again, that big thing that I've been trying to talk a lot with you guys about. Um, simplify, 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 please. Um, because what's going to happen is when you start to simplify, it doesn't take you as long to make your adjustments because you already know what they are. Right, you're not just trying to figure it out. Well, I'll just randomly do this, this, and this. No, it's like boom, 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 boom. I already know. Like short side cover two, wide side cover four, Mabel, boom, done. Like as opposed to, well, it looks like he's motioning this guy, and well, oh, he flipped his play, and you know what I mean. No, it's boom. Like just really, really consolidate what you're doing. Um, that will help a ton. All right, so man coverage here. Crosser wide open. Dot. That's, they've really, I think the way that they decided to patch bunch tight in is through making it so that you drop or like you don't get your feet in bounds whenever you throw a dot. So that's very frustrating. So we're going to just con be consistent. Um, Continue to run bunch tight end, pave it over until we see anything that shows us that he might actually be able to stop it. Release that delay fade. Get up ball. And we've got about a uh, minute 30. I need to throw that away. And now I got to wait. Oh, that was so frustrating. I guess that was good defense. Um, okay, my opponent is running um, man to man. This isn't the best play call, but it should work. If he's in man coverage, we'll be fine. And there's Devontae Adams doing his thing. That's why tight end corner, and I run tight end corner very similar to the way that I would run like the flood play from the bunch. And so you now have like this really, really good PA boot over, but then you, you know, kind of pair that with um, the other play. So we'll see if he runs cover two here. And I think this is cover two actually. Oh, it's cover two man. Good dot right there. And now right here, you just try to pop a run. You try, you say like, okay, you know, I know I've got, you know, a lot of opportunity here. I'm just trying to like do a truck, do exactly what I just did. Catch him in a, catch him in a no huddle situation, catch him, you know, and just, and just go. Um, obviously we left 30 seconds on the clock that he can go score. It's also 30 seconds that he can make a mistake, you know? So defensively, we just have to be, sound fundamentally sound do exactly what we need to do so you're going to see that i'm going to move my zone drops back i'm going to have my hooks on 10 
my flats on 30, my curl flats are going to be on 15. And we're going to just play some sound defense, basically, is our goal. But, yeah, decent, decent drive right there. So 30, 15, and 10 uh, for end of half situations like what we're in right now. And really what you're going to see... Good D. Now we try to force a fumble, try to force a fumble, try to force a... How is that not a fumble? Oh, how is that not a fumble? That's the second time he's ran with the quarterback and gotten laid out and he hasn't fumbled the ball. Okay, good D. Or good good route, good route. Um, so he's level 41 here. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the curl flats back. We're going to move the curl flats back to 10, but we're going to leave the hook curls at 10. All right, good job. So that's it. I mean, it's, you got to give him credit too, right? I mean, he made a good play. Uh, he executed. I, I cannot tell you how random his offense is. Um, I don't know if he's ran the same play twice. I, he, may, he may have ran. I think when he went to gun tight, that was like the first time that he's ran the same play twice. So, you know, it is what it is. We've got to continue to adjust. Obviously, he's doing something right. He's moving the ball. Um, but again, he's going to have to settle for three here. He's not going to be able to score. Uh, we're going to go to cover two man. And we're going to tell our boys to go eat. We're going to try to get him to force this little post right, right there. That's exactly what we wanted him to do. Um, so we got him to force the post. Perfect defense. Um, yeah, that was, that, was a, that was huge. That was huge, 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 huge. Because now what I can do, I mean, I guess I get what he was doing a little bit. But if I go out and score a touchdown on this drive, I'm going to go up by two possessions. So uh, obviously one other quick, huge, huge, huge tip. Just like on defense, you want to wait, you want to pause, you want to let them call their play. Same thing on kickoff return. If you just come out and flip it and go, they're going to onside kick you. I can't tell you how many times I've lost possessions because of that. Please just wait. Just wait. Just wait the extra second. Press pause. Calm down a little bit and uh, and let it just, you know, let it come to you. You know, it's, it's one of those super, it's a simple, simple tip, but I think it's super, super uh, effective. He really hasn't had an answer for boot over most of this game so far, so we're going to stick with it. Um, one thing I would tell you is when you ID out of this, like when you set it up, if you if you ID the corner, it will help with the rollout a little bit. So you'll see you'll get a little bit wider of a split. Really, really nice. And then bam, a little double juke. A little double juke. And good D. And we'll move. We'll move quick. We'll move quick. I mean, you see, just little things. I mean, just little things. Right there, Rodgers made a great move on that contain. So you see now his his move is like, okay, well, I guess I'll just call cover two man. Like, I guess that's I guess that's all I can call. I don't know what to do. I'm just going to call cover two man. So what we can do is we can actually um, – try to help him a little bit so you see right here just a little motion out nice little dot right there against the main coverage keep moving okay so uh man coverage um so right here this is a great this is why i mean tight end corner is a great little red zone play so you just use this nice little motion out here and you got your tight end wide open dot touchdown packers huge 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 looks exactly the same as uh it, you know that tight end corner looks exactly the same as um pa boot over if you run it right and it goes in a completely different direction they can't cut they can't cover the tight end and the corner it's just too much it's just too much and that's why the bunch 
tight end, I think is so powerful because the plays really do fit together really nicely. Um, they really do a good job of fitting together. So I've kind of wrestled with switching back to uh, bunch tight end. Just the more I study it, the more I fall in love with bunch tight end because of the simplicity aspect of it. And I'm really trying to move to like only having, you know, five plays unless I have like a specific situation, um, you know, that I need more. Oh, I left him. Dang. Oh, that's on me. Oh, my gosh. That's on me. That's on me. That's on me. I totally left him wide open. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Oh, that was on me. Shoot, man. Oh, that was so on me, too. Knew that was coming. Wish I could get up. Okay. But still, we're up. I mean, I guess it's the right move for him to go to th for two right there. Really nothing nothing really lost by him on that decision to go for two. If we go for three, we're still up by eight. Um, field goal is not a bad thing. Like A field goal is not a bad thing um, by any means on this. But we're just going to keep it simple, um, not not try to do anything too complicated. I think it's really, really important to understand. They're, uh, you have to understand the defense is adjusting to you just like you're adjusting to them. And so if you make too many adjustments, we talk about science, you talk about variables. If you mess with too many of the variables, you know, it couldn't be, um, it could be a bad result for you. Right there, a little delay fade. That's the Tumnus. We're 11 of 13 for 250. And again, really hasn't shown me anything that would tell me that he's really in a good space to defend boot over. So we're just going to keep rolling. Um, of course, as soon as I say that. Um, that's where I talk about. It's really important. So like the way he's doing it, he's basically saying, I'm going to contain everybody. Right? That's what I'm going to do. And that way you can't roll out. If you ID the corner on the right side, they'll block a little bit better. If they don't, then just stop your guy and roll out, and then you can basically, this whole side of the field is now open, as you can see. And of course, I run, oh, it's so annoying how Madden does this to you sometimes. I should have slid, I should have slid, I know I should have slid. I'm frustrated because he's ran, he had, he took a hit stick, and his guy didn't fumble, but it is what it is. So see see how he's see how you're starting to see a formula. So when he goes to single back bunch, he runs quick pitch. That's what he does. When he goes to tray open, he runs inside zone or tray open. He runs stick. When he goes to gun tray, he's ran inside zone. When he runs to gun tight, he, you start to kind of see like okay, he's got one or two money plays. Period. So like right here, he's going to go to empty niner. It's very very likely that he is going to run uh, middle high low. Can almost guarantee you that's what he's going to run. Or a screen. So there's a screen, yep. Now that's his offense. That's what he does every time. And he never changes it. Um, you'll see. I mean, you'll see. It, it'll happen again here. So, like, if he comes out in a five wide, it's going to probably be middle, high, low now. He's cycling you through a scripted set of plays. So he's going to go to doubles flex. I can already pretty much tell you what he's going to do. Well, PA deep out. There's the in route. Now he's going to roll out, try to throw it up. There's Jair Alexander, and I drop an interception. But by golly, if I roll out one time with my quarterback, I get a hit stick fumble. That is the definition of shame in Madden 21, man. I'm telling you, that's so annoying that that guy is able to do that. But, I mean, you see, every time he goes to doubles flex, PAD, but every single time. Now he's going a bunch wide. I wonder what he's going to call. You know what I mean? Like, it's not um, – our problem is we we are having a really hard time at getting our stinking adjustments off. And that was a nice little user strip right there. I clicked onto the guy and stripped it. Um, but again, you know, it comes down to you've got to press pause, come out with it. Because he's running so many stupid formations, it's really hard 
for me, and, it, and it's, kudos to him, it's really hard for me to know where my guy is going to be. Where's my slot? Because that's kind of one of the things that I need to know. I need to know where my slot is. Um, so that's that's the biggest uh, challenge so far. Gosh dang it. And all the buttons change. So like if you're trying to defend, it's just annoying the way he's playing. Oh, that's got to be a pick. Oh my gosh, he's running levels. He literally just ran levels. Which is a good concept, but like, man. Okay, so ball is on the 15, so we should move some stuff around here. So we're gonna put these at five, 25. We're just gonna go down to 25, five. Little slip screen. It's not a bad call. I'm pretty sure he's in. Um, actually, I don't know what he's. He might be in Miami. I'm not sure what he's in actually. Second and eight. We'll keep things where they're at for now. Gun tight. Okay. So it's very likely that. Um, So frustrating. Four people in Baker Mayfield apparently can juke them all out. That's man. That's this. That's the story of this game for you. That is the story of this game for you. Gunwing tight. His favorite little two point conversion play. Oh, I can't adjust, man. It takes so the the one the one drawback and that's where it's like you should just come out in nickel normal. The one drawback to nickel normal is it takes so long to set the dang formation up. It's a great formation, but gosh, it takes so long to get it set. Big nickel over G is probably a better move in the red zone um, because when you show blitz out of big nickel, it creates that it creates that little diamond uh, that we want. So yeah, that's frustrating. I fumbled the ball because I was greedy and he scored by running with Baker Mayfield through four people. Not on conservative. Okay. So that's, that's where it's like, okay, you, you, you've got to be smarter than that. That's on me. One of the things that people don't realize when they're doing this contain crap, you can easily, um, and that right there is good. That's a good swerve catch. That's actually a really good swerve catch. I knew that was going to get open. Um, it didn't look like it would, but it was. A, it's actually a very simple little swerve catch right there. But anyways, right here, um, this is a critical drive. Somehow he found the way to get the lead again, which is insane to me. But um, you know, it is what it is. So anyways, um, looks like looks like he wants to run like cover two, which ain't going to work. And there's that. That's the play. That's the mesh play. That's the mesh play right there. We're gonna try to hit the running back. It looks like he did shift to man. That's that's so unfortunate. Man. They like totally screwed. Like as many people will tell you that you know Madden twenty one brought the flats back. They've totally screwed table routes this year, man. Like table routes, specifically against man coverage, they just don't really do anything for you. Little inside zone. Go back to it here. We need a touchdown. We got it. A good drive by the offense. Defense needs one stop. You know, you got to believe you're going to get one stop here. Um, through everything that's happened in this game, you can't get one stop on this guy. Um, yeah, we need one stop. That's huge. So as far as like what's worked for him, honestly, probably bad user by me. A lot of it's just been bad user and honestly luck. Like the fact that he hasn't fumbled is crazy to me. So he's got three minutes. He's got a guac drive here. Uh, coaching adjustments. We're going to move back to what we know, 30, 10, and 5. 
Um, and the biggest thing is just quick snapping random money plays. That's his move. I don't know where my curl flat is. I don't know where my curl flat is. Like, where is my curl flat zone? So based off of the way that he is playing, uh, we have to make a little bit of an adjustment. We're going to move these down to 5 and move these down to 25. It's more of just like a situational thing. Should see some kind of screen, little levels, and another dropped interception. I think that's a third dropped interception this game. And like I said, I mean, you just uh, cycle through. What's the next money play on the list? What's the next one? Turn the dial. Turn the dial. We have no intentionality with our play calls. Ah, I'm so annoyed. Like right into it. Throws it right into it. Where's my pick? Third and seven. Um, probably... I'm surprised that he's going to run this. Um, and there's four people, and he one-handed catches it. And it's going to bring up fourth and six. Um, that is the story of the game right now, boys. So I talked a little bit about how when someone uh, is just running a series of money plays, it takes them, uh, I've talked about this before, it takes them longer to see stuff. So, because they're, they're, they're you notice like he throws a drag, it's, it's kind of a short, he's not able to read it fast enough because it's he's not used to running it. He's not used to running it and seeing different coverages and things like that. So like right here, we're gonna try to send some pressure um, right there and jeez, man, gosh dang it. That's not even a good route. Like. That route doesn't even beat man. Ugh. Like so random. Like the most random player I've ever played. Golly. All right, doubles flex. So what's he gonna call? Probably gonna call PAD bouts. He probably flipped the play. Oh, there's a drag. There we go. We finally tackled him. Still didn't get a fumble, but we tackled him. Um, third and nine. It's kind of an interesting spot. Um, we're gonna go. We're gonna send heat. Kind of force him a little bit. And he completes it. Just eats it. Why not? He is the most random player I've ever played. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, he throws an in route to the tight end and somehow the tight end magically catches the ball. Um, okay, so we should be at 25. Yeah, we're fine, okay. So 27 seconds left. I mean, it's pretty much exactly what he would want from a clock perspective. Uh, what we're going to do on this next play. Um, got him. Yep. When you run the same play every time, that's what happens. Uh, so right there, we just send some pressure just to make him feel it a little bit. And then we knew what he was going to call because we know doubles flex is PAD bounce every single play. And so what we did was we basically called Mike Blitz three, and then we created a, we, we basically, um, because we knew that the tight end was not gonna be on a streak, we didn't have to worry about only having one guy. We only had one guy deep. Everybody else was playing underneath. We knew what to, tight, we knew what to watch for. And sure enough, he's gonna quit out because he's sad. He's gotta go play Jeopardy with somebody else. But thanks for watching this video. If you wanna get the exact offense and defense I ran in this, it is available in the description.